What's going on, y'all? All right, so this is just another video to test the lighting and just to test to see if uh, the filming is going to go better in this room. So just this is going to be a short video. So it's going to be mostly math, uh, and it's still going to be physics related, namely quantum mechanics. So what I have chosen is the we're going to solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation, which involves partial differential equation techniques and uh, it will give us a chance to just do a little bit of work and you can see how I'm going to solve the problems and how I'm going to, I'm gonna try not to skip anything and, or explain and, and make sure I make it easy to follow. So two important things to know first is uh, just make sure you know that psi here, since we're in quantum mechanics, psi is the representation of a particle. So that and it's called the wave function so it's up there now I'm gonna do videos on wave function uh, what that is on uh, wave particle duality on double slit experiment sometime in the future so just uh, stay posted for that uh, so here the H hat in the time dependent Schrodinger equation is an operator so it's a Hamiltonian operator and I have written it here now you can't see it there since I have written H hat, but H hat within it involves a, a derivative with respect to X. So you have on this side a derivative, derivative with respect to X, <clears throat> excuse me, and a derivative with respect to time over here. You have two derivatives with different, with respect to different variables. So this is a partial differential equation. We're gonna use partial differential equation technique uh, a technique named separation of variables which will allow us to go from a partial differential equation to two ordinary differential equations something much easier to solve so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is for the separation of variables technique we're going to say that we're gonna assume that our wave function of two variables is actually just the product of two other functions that are that only depend on one variable each so we can this is what I want to make sure you get used to is that we can use any two way from any two functions to represent our two functions that depend on one variable I could use anything f and g alpha beta psi and phi phi whatever so um, most, of, most of you or just everybody has seen mostly f of x. So we're just gonna leave it this way to make it easier to follow. So <clears throat> first things first is we're going to plug this product in for these wave functions. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start over here. We're going to do and we can write this all right let's write this so it's easier to see this is going to be Okay, all I've done is just rewritten with our product of two functions for psi. This will allow us to do a little bit of manipulation. So, <clears throat> and, and this is gonna be one of, the, uh, one of the benefits of using this technique is that now that we have a partial derivative of these two functions. Now, when you take a derivative with respect to time here of these two functions. Now, if this function doesn't depend on time at all, when you take the time derivative, of course, the rate of change of time of a function that doesn't even have time in it, in it means it's not gonna change. So this side can be rewritten as, and we can take out the function which doesn't change with time. This is basically a constant since we're not we're not uh, changing it, we're not taking the rate of change. And we can then 
just apply this to here, but it would, instead of being a partial derivative, now it's a regular derivative since it is taking the rate of change of the variable, the only variable that it depends on. So we have this. Now, this is one step short of separating our two uh, differential equations into, I'm sorry, into one differential equation, partial differential equation to two ordinary differential equations. So we have this and we have this. So what we want to do is we want to have we're going to want to move this f of x to this side and this g of t on this side. So now we're going to have all x's, all x terms on one side and all t terms on the other. So we're going to go next. We're going to say h hat acting on f of x. And acting on is a very, very important and correct way to say it. So let me explain a little bit about that is that these operators uh, which is what they're called, are a set of instructions. They're a set of rules. You can look at it as just a uh, tasks that are, are going to be given to whatever function it is applied to, which means whatever function it's on the left side of. So taking the derivative, which is this symbol here, on a function f of x or how it was in high school y of x when you take the derivative of this you're performing ac actions and strat or not strategies but you're performing uh, different processes to this to give you something different and what what's going to give you is the derivative of y so that d over dx is an operator, this is an operator. My point is that when you have an operator acting on a function, that makes it something different. You can't, since what we're going to do here is we're going to divide this f of x out. So when we divide this f of x, this cancels. When we divide the f, that f of x here, even though we have this f of, x, f of x under this one, they don't cancel because this h hat makes this something different, but we represent that together. So this doesn't cancel. We're gonna have this on the left-hand side. This is gonna be equal to i h bar derivative of g of t. And since we're gonna divide the g of t here and we're going to divide that out from here this is going to be a 1 over g of t now what we've done is we've separated all our variables we have all the x's on the left hand side and our t's on the right hand side here what i'm going to do now is say <clears throat> okay so our first equation is going to be our time one. So let me, uh, it's going to be easier here. Okay, so when you look at this relationship, the separation of variables technique puts it in this form because it tells us that if you change the value of x, since you have a function of it, when you change it, there is no value of x here in order for this to change. But if this is gonna stay equal, this has to have a special relationship, meaning this has to be, they both have to be equal to some constant number. So no matter what values are put in, this is going to be equal to some number that will not change. And just because we know, I know what this is going to be the answer, uh, down the road or at the end is going to be, I'm going to select the letter or the symbol or the variable, whatever, E, okay? So we can take each one of these relationships, this equal to E and this equal to E, and we can solve them. So first we're gonna have H hat 
acting on f of x divided by f of x is equal to e. And then we're going to have our second relationship, which we're going to write, let's write it over here. And that's going to be i h bar dg of t over dt 1 over g of t is equal to e. And so we're going to solve that in a second. So first we got this. Easy. We can just move this f of x over. And so far we have that relationship right here. Now, this is not going to be a long equation, but it's still, we still have a little bit of work to do. So now is when we plug in the value for the Hamiltonian. So the value of the Hamiltonian is uh, momentum operator squared divided by 2m plus the potential. We're going to plug that in for h. So we're going to do that. Let's do it yeah, right next to it. So we have uh, now I haven't written it here, but I can write it here that the momentum operator is equal to I H bar. Uh, in this case, we're only working with one variable. So it's going to be D over DX. And if you don't know, or if you just a reminder, <clears throat> all these operators don't have a value by themselves. They have to act on a wave function. So this is going to take some wave function, take the derivative and then multiply by i h bar. So here, that is going to be inside this Hamiltonian. So this is going to be i h bar d by dx squared over 2m plus v of x. Okay. <clears throat> so this is going to be, this is just basically h hat plugged in equal to that. So we're going to have to do a little bit of moving around. Um, the first thing we have to do is apply this square here. Now, you're squaring the imaginary number i. i is defined as the square root of negative 1. When you square it, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 becomes negative 1. So this expression, or this term here, is going to become, you're going to square the i, that's negative 1. You can just put a negative sign. Obviously, you can omit the 1. h bar is going to be squared. You're going to have that over 2m. And this squared is also going to apply to this derivative. So that's going to be the second derivative. Now, once you apply this squared, you're going to have two terms, which you can then distribute this f of x to. So we can do that. And we can say this is minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative of f of x plus v of x times f of x equal to e times f of x. So this is a very, very uh, commonly used form in quantum mechanics. Basically, you're going to spend a lot of time writing this out and then doing different things to it, coming up with propagators, and, but that's for a different video. <clears throat> so from here, what you, what you want to get is you're gonna wanna get, you're gonna wanna solve for f of x. So in this case, what you're gonna do is, uh, this you have here is a second derivative. So you have, again, 
I was wanting to say this is the beginning. So one of the one of the best things that you can do is familiarize yourself with every different kind of notation for derivatives, for operators, for um, vectors, cross products, anything anything that has a different notation, different textbooks, familiarize yourself with them because if you do that, everything else pretty much becomes algebra. So right here you have a second derivative, then you have two first derivative terms. Now you have a second derivative and a first derivative. This, again, this is only with one variable. This is called a second order linear differential equation. This is very easy to solve using what's called a characteristic equation. And <clears throat> that's the way to solve this portion, which I don't want to mix you up, but I want to make sure I say this, is that when we turn this into two ordinary differential equations, this one still has time, the variable time in it. This is time dependent. This does not have time in it. This is not time dependent. This is time independent. So this is the time we have out of the time dependent Schrodinger equation, we have just derived the time independent Schrodinger equation. And they're all important. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. So this is going to give us the full expression for psi. So this is going to be, uh, well, the way to solve second order differential equations is to make this term, uh, or we're gonna try to isolate this term and set it equal to everything else in order for us to be able to employ the characteristic equation strategy. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna subtract this term. We're gonna do, again, I'm not gonna skip any steps, so I may, I may go a little slow for some of you, but for the rest of you who need it, I'm not going to speed up. So this is going to be the second derivative of f of x equals e f of x minus the potential times f of x, right? Now here, we're gonna factor out the f of x from here, it's just multiplied This is going to be in parentheses e minus v of x times f of x. So now we have this side, left hand side, equal to this right hand side. Now, like I said, we want to isolate this term. We're going to multiply by 2m and divide by negative h squared. This is going to make this become the, well, let me write this a little bit to the left. Second derivative of f of x is equal to e minus v of x over 2m. I am sorry, I am already making algebraic mistakes. Sorry, it's 2m e minus vx all over minus h bar squared. And this is gonna be multiplied by f of x. Here, this is a very, very, this is what you want. You wanna put the things in this form because then you can set this, what's in the brackets, equal to some constant, uh, just so that you don't have to be rewriting the numbers as you solve the, the equation. Now. I will make another video on how to use the characteristic equation. The There's two steps that I hate that I'm going to omit right now, but it's only because solving this is a technique on its own. Very, very simple. What The, the, the next step that I'm going to write is basically how once you learn how to do it, you skip it anyway. There's It's just so that you can justify a substitution. So. In this case, this 
it, we set this term in the brackets equal to k. And well, we, well, we actually set this then <clears throat> in the brackets equal to k, but we retain this negative. So we're going to retain this negative here. So this is going to be the second derivative of f of x is equal to negative k times f of x. So the way we're going to solve this is then we are going to, the substitution that I can't, I don't want to get into right now is going to be that we can treat this uh, as a polynomial with where we substitute r to the power of the derivative, the order of the derivative here. So if this is the second derivative, we take r, we use r, we substitute r squared. And then we say this is the zeroth derivative, meaning it's no derivative. Then we substitute r to the zero power, which is equal to one. That we multiply by this negative k. What we want this relationship, when we get this out of here, if you can't see that, of course, like I said, there's an, there's an actual technique that explains how that comes, how that comes out. But this allows us to then say, okay, we can solve for this algebraically, just how we would solve for uh, <clears throat> a quadratic, for quadratic roots. So here we're going to take the square root on both sides. This is r. This is going to be the square root of negative k. Square root of a negative number is i. Sorry, it's plus or minus square root of negative k. This is going to be then plus or minus i, we've factored out the negative one, square root of k. That means that the eigenvalues of this equation are this. That means that when we write our solution, and this comes from differential equations, and this also comes from linear algebra, is that these two solutions, plus i root k and minus i root k, are on the exponents of exponentials, which represent our solution. So, like I said, I will post a video with more detail on this technique here, but since it's only a, a part of our entire objective, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. So, this is then represented, so we can write our solution of f of x as some constant times e to the first solution, which is i root k plus some other constant times e to the other solution, which is minus i root k. Of course, root k being the square root of this, which is the square root of 2me minus v of x over h bar. This is the answer to the first relationship. This is for the uh, function of x. So now we're going to do the function of time. So this is going to be part of our solution and I'll show you how we can put that together. Now it's also very, very convenient to write this in its compact form, which, let me not mix things up. This is going to be f of x is equal to a times e to the plus or minus i root k. So these are the two solutions, but I will, I will make sure to highlight the importance of this one. Okay. I admit that was a lot, but now we have this. So this is a lot shorter than this, and even I omitted parts of here. So again, so this is going to be equal to that constant that we just said. And like I said, we could have made that be anything. We could have made that be a different letter, a symbol, a Greek symbol, anything. So this is not a second order 
this is not a second derivative here. This is just the first derivative. When we have a first derivative, what we can do is we can rearrange the equation and then we just integrate both sides. That's a lot easier. So it can be a lot easier. It can be a lot more difficult. So in this case, but we also want to do the same thing. We want to, we want to rearrange this with the constants in one specific, specific side. So we're going to rearrange this this way. We're going to, we're going to keep our functions, which in this case is g of t. We're going to keep those on the left side and our variable t, we're going to move this to the right side. Sorry, we're going to move, keep this on the left side and the t's on the right side. So this is going to be derivative of g of t over dt multiplied by one over g of t is going to be equal to e divided by i times h bar multiplied by dt. So here, now we have our two functions, g of t, g of t, and I already made a mistake, look at that. So we're going to do it this way. <clears throat> There we go. That's what we want. Now we're almost done. So we're going to integrate both sides. So if we we're going to integrate, we're going to do d of g of t. Uh, we're going to do Okay, and this is going to be okay so this is what we're going to do and again yes I made another mistake this is actually going to be we're going to be integrating both sides but we're going to integrate the right side uh, basically The right hand side is going to be from the interval 0 to some time t. The left hand side is going to be our function from 0 to some finite time t. So when we integrate this, now notice that the right hand side has three constants. We can just move those out and we can solve for the integral of dt. So if I rewrite this in a much easier to see form, we will see that it's e over i h bar integrating from zero to t of dt. Integrating of just dt, this is just gonna be t evaluated from t to zero. So if we rewrite this, it's going to be e divided by i over h bar. And this is going to be, uh, and let me, yeah, that's fine. So this is going to be t minus zero, which is just going to be Let me write this down here just in case it's out of frame. I'll leave this here, but we know that's just e times t divided by i over h bar. On this side, then, we have the, integr uh, the integral of 1 over g of t times d of g of t. Now, once you do this technique, you'll start to see that when you get this, it's it becomes almost second like nature that that is the natural log. Because when you take the derivative of a natural log, the argument ends up being in the denominator, uh, which when you have, when you take the derivative of a function, its formal expression is whatever the derivative is times d 
of that function. So in this case, the derivative of gt ends up to be 1 over gt times dgt t times dg of t. Sorry. So what we're going to have here is then the, now I'm going to write the next part below. It's going to be the natural log of g of t minus the natural log of g of 0 which, as you know, by the, uh, the rules of logarithms, you can rewrite this a different way. So now we're going to write this with this here. It's going to be e times t divided by ih. So now we can rewrite this left-hand side again. This is going to be when you have two terms subtracted inside of a log, a natural log. It's the natural log of this first term divided by the natural log of this. So this is going to be ln of g of t divided by the ln of g of 0. At this point, I know I'm not really explaining much other than just doing the, the algebra and the calculations, but a lot of professors just assume you know it which you may or may not uh, but it, it always helps to go through it once just to make sure that you confirm it is what you think it is so here our just as it was in this first differential equation we were presented with this our goal was to isolate and get f of x which is this right there here the same thing applies we want g of t by itself so we have to do all of this in order to get here we we've come here so we're very close now keep doing the algebra we multiply both sides by the ln of g of zero <clears throat> and that's going to be uh let's see we're gonna we're gonna draw a little arrow so this is going to be the natural log of g of t equal to uh, let's see, e of t over i times h bar. And let me see if I did that over there. No, okay. So we have here, and then we're going to multiply this by the natural log of g of 0. Here. So the last thing we need to do is raise this to the e. <clears throat> so now we're going to have, when we have an exponential raised to the ln, those cancel, right? So when we have, <clears throat> so when we have e to the ln of x cubed, that is equal to x cubed because the e and the ln. Okay, so back to where we were at. So our expression becomes then the natural log of g of t, since we then multiply the denominator, the natural log of g of zero onto the right-hand side. That gives us this expression here. When we see this, we already know that we can then, we know how to isolate g of t, which is ultimately what we want. So, as you may know, well, you better remember is that e to the ln of any argument the e and the ln are uh, anti operators of each other I'm not exactly sure that's the correct term but still they're opposites of each other and so they are <clears throat> uh, what they do is they cancel whenever you have them whenever you have e raised to the ln it cancels so we're gonna do that here we're gonna raise e to the ln of g of t which is going to give us g of t by itself and we're going to raise this side by e so since this is all multiplied together the e and this ln is going to cancel and it's going to bring the argument inside of it down below so it's going to be e to the e times t divided by i h bar times and then this would be multiplied 
by the ln of g of zero, but because the e cancels with that, we're left with just g of zero, right? This is the answer that we want. Now, that's not the, that is not the, that's basically, that's still not the answer. The answer we want is psi of x and t. Now, since we assume that there, that psi of x and t is a product of these two functions, we have to then express it as such. So the way that we do it is we can do this uh, this way. So we can say that, uh, what color can we use? Let's use my favorite color, orange. So we're gonna have psi of x and t is going to then be equal to, and you'll see this form in a lot of textbooks, is that since there's multiple ways to represent this, you can use Euler's identity and represent this uh, using sines and cosines, uh, but you'll see this written in the uh, textbooks. You'll see that the, you'll have the function that depends on x multiplied by exponential raised to the et over ih bar times the initial, this is what's called the initial state of the function, um, meaning when time equals zero. So you're saying, since you have separated this function into functions of two different function, uh, one of each different variable, when you express it, you have to say, well, the, the portion of our wave function that determines the, the motion or the, or the displacement, uh, which uh, is x, is given by this function. Uh, and then this whole term, this exponential raised to this, is part of what dictates how it progresses or how it evolves in time, how it evolves in time. So we have the, this is called the time evolution of our wave function, but this only says how it moves forward. We also have to state at what, or how it started, which is then given by this g of zero, because this is when t is equal to zero. So this states our wave function properly in a way that we can then work with, because it gives both of these um, functions and how they're related to one, not related to one another, how they're related to our system. And this is the answer to the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So if you feel like I have not covered that clearly, if you want to hear something else, or if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, just send me a message or write down in the comments. All right. Thank you.